insulin uh, in last class also we discussed insulin is a polypeptide with 51 amino acid 51 a chain of 51 amino acid is there but this is arranged in two chain chain a which contains 21 amino acid and chain b which contains 30 amino acid so last class we have discussed in detail so just i'm moving little bit fast okay so this two chain of insulin are held together by um, disulfide bond okay uh, two inter and one intra disulfide bond okay and um, beef, uh, like uh, uh, nowadays the insulin which is pre uh, prepared by recombinant dna technology uh, is um, commonly used and it is very similar to amino, um, the insulin of human so that is why we say human insulin but before the uh, this technology of recombinant dna technology was there the insulin used to be derived from um, pork and beef okay um, so uh, that is why we we used to have the animal insulin and nowadays those insulin are said to be the conventional insulin the older in insulin okay and the pork was uh, different from um, the human um, uh, pork insulin was different from human insulin by one amino acid so that is why it was less antigenic while beef it was more antigenic okay and synthesis of insulin in our body okay i am repeatedly telling you all this synthesis the actions of insulin will be taught in detail in physiology okay so but as a revision or whatever is essential for, from pharmacology point of view just i am discussing that okay so this insulin is synthesized as a pre pro insulin a long chain a single chain of um, um, amino acid to 110 amino acid is synthesized in endoplasmic reticulum and that is what we say pre pro insulin and this pre pro insulin um, uh, loses its 24 amino acid and converts to pro insulin okay and uh, this is transported to uh, golgi apparatus where it converts insulin and c peptide both are formed and both these insulin and c peptide are stored in granules of beta cell okay so this is a um, figure of uh, the pro insulin okay uh, a diagram so here you can see a single chain is folded and um, um, okay uh, the amino acids with the two uh, the um, uh, disulfide bond it is attached okay so it is folded uh, presently it is a it, it is a single uh, chain uh, polypeptide okay so with the amino acids so what happens from here and here this c this is a c peptide from here and here it breaks and remaining is the two chain. Now it becomes a two chain, chain A, which contains 21 amino acids, and chain B, which contains 30, um, 31, 30 amino acids, okay? So uh, this is what is insulin. So from here it is broken, and then the leftover is insulin. So insulin and that the broken portion of uh, the pro-insulin, okay, that CPEP chain is stored together and uh, while releasing insulin, the C-peptide is also released, okay. So this is the structure of insulin, okay, and the synthesis. So insulin, it is measured in international unit, last time I said, and this is synthesized and stored in granule and how it is released in our body is, it is uh, for the release, there are controlling uh, uh, factors, okay which uh, control the insulin secretion. The most important factor is blood glucose concentration. And in last class also we talked about that. So today I will just uh, briefly revise and then go. And similarly, hormonal control and neuronal control is also there, but the most important is the blood glucose concentration, okay? Or you can say the chemical control, chemical control of um, insulin. Insulin release is controlled chemically and um, even though the amino acids and other um, 
also um, affect the insulin um, release but glucose is some of the very important so that is why among the chemical we have said blood glucose concentration now how does blood, blood glucose concentration releases the uh, insulin in even in last class i have shown this animation so when the concentration of glucose increases in the blood so glucose with the help of glute, glucose transporter which is present in cell membrane of beta um, uh, beta cells okay this glucose enter and then there will be uh, formation of atp from this glucose and this atp uh, generally uh, does uh, opening and closing of the ion channels it occurs but the most important is it goes okay and close the uh, potassium channel okay so pot potassium going out uh, is inhibited so there will be deep uh, uh, okay so here since it is inhibited then the calcium the voltage gated calcium channel opens and this calcium causes more release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum and then this uh, lead to my um, 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 the exocytosis of the insulin okay so this is so here uh, this beta cell generally integrate all those i have already said this is not only the beta cell releases insulin not only uh, uh, by uh, the glucose concentration but also it the hormone and the neurotransmitter have action on release of the um, uh, insulins okay so it is being integrated by beta cell so to summarize this okay this there is a diagram given in katzang pharmacology just the animated from a summarized which is essentially required uh, from pharmacology point of view is when glucose concentration in the blood increases okay then this glucose is transported into the beta cell okay with the help of glucose transporter okay this glucose transporter which is present in cell membrane of beta cell it um, transmit and um, uh, the metabolism atp is formed and it atp it closes the potassium channel and this closing of potassium will not allow the potassium to go out exocytosis so there will be depolarization now this depolarization will open the calcium channel and calcium enters okay and this calcium leads to exocytosis of um, um, the granules which release ultimately release the insulin this is how when glucose level increases in our blood the insulin is released that is what we said and this release is also uh, this release occur in two phases okay phase one and phase two phase one causes immediately there will be release sharp rise but again it will start falling and after some time again the insulin is released which remain for long period of time okay so phase one and phase two phase one is immediate and phase two so these two phases are present in uh, the normal um, human beings okay like um, in a normal person like us okay so when we take uh, some carbohydrate or the um, things which increases the glucose level in our body then what will happen that will immediately cause release of insulin and after some time again there will be delayed release of insulin so this is first phase and second phase so in type 2 diabetes mellitus patient this first phase is absent okay there will be immediately the um, uh, glucose will not be uh, sorry in, in, insulin will not be released okay in response to the glucose so only uh, phase 2 is present while in type 1 diabetes mellitus there is no insulin so whether there is increase in blood glucose level or some hormones or whatever the reason there won't be any release of insulin so there will be no any phase of insulin release so type 1 diabetes mellitus and type 2 diabetes mellitus okay got it yes sir 
Okay. So the, up to this, we have discussed in um, last uh, class, isn't it? And this uh, uh, diagram is taken from Rangendale Pharmacology. Okay. If you want, you can just search um, for elaboration. And this phase one, phase two will be taught in detail. Okay. In physiology. Okay. So now hormonal control of uh, insulin secretion. Uh, the insulin secretion is stimulated or the insulin secretion is increased by glucagon, gastrin, secretin, polycystokinin, etc. Okay. So the most important is glucagon. Okay. So glucagon and insulin, it has opposite action and um, glucagon increases the insulin um, uh, secretion and insulin uh, causes glucagon. So there is a check and balance between the insulin and glucagon. And this insulin uh, is inhibited by uh, somatostatin, galanin and amidin. Okay. So this is the hormone which uh, causes uh, increase or decrease in insulin secretion. Okay. They have a role, but this role is lesser than the glucose one which we discussed earlier. So similarly, neuronal control, the parasympathetic nervous system, it insulin stimulate, stimulate insulin secretion because uh, insulin, what does it do is it um, try to deposit, okay, uh, the um, carbohydrate, fat and uh, amino acids in a system so that it could be utilized in an emergency. Okay, so it is spares, it conserves the energy. So insulin try to do that. Okay, so that is why parasympathetic, which is a conservation at that time. Yes. Yes. Is there any difficulty? Okay. So parasympathetic stimulate insulin secretion and sympathetic system uh, generally inhibit. Okay, generally, um, ultimately there will be inhibition of in, in insulin sec secretion. But if you see individually, alpha two decrease the release, which is predominant, while beta two increase the release, increase the release of insulin. Okay, so beta two. Uh, Okay, so in first semester we have in ANS we have uh, discussed that. Okay, the role where beta two is present in skeletal muscle it uh, is, and then it helps to enter the uh, blood uh, glucose into the cells. Okay, so that the energy, uh, the skeletal muscles and other they get the energy. So sympathetic alpha two. Um, okay. Uh, inhibit the release, decrease the release, while beta to increase. But this alpha two action is more predominant. So ultimately, on sympathetic nervous stimulation, you will see the inhibition of insulin secretion. Okay, parasympathetic increase the secretion, and sympathetic decrease the secretion of insulin. Okay, let us briefly see the effects of insulin. Now, effect of insulin is uh, like. It, Insulin is an anabolic hormone, okay, anabolism. It promotes the growth, it promotes the deposition of uh, uh, fat, um, the carbohydrate and a protein deposition. So that is why it increases the muscle mass also, okay, so insulin. Got it? So uh, can you name one uh, hormone which has exactly opposite action to that of insulin and we say it as a catabolic hormone anyone the hormone which has exactly opposite action of uh, the insulin and causes catabolism okay insulin is an anabolic thyroxine. hormone yes growth hormone growth hormone is thyroxine. sorry Thyroxine. Thyroxine. Sorry? Thyroxine. No. Thyroxine. Recent, recently you have read the corticosteroids. Corticoid. 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 
the hydrocortisone, cortisol. Okay, so that is catabolic hormone. Just now think, don't uh, just to remember. I am just um, helping you how to remember. Now catabolic, this corticosteroid, they are uh, essential for the stressful condition, isn't it? Yes or no? To cope up with the stress, the corticosteroid hormones are essential. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Please interact so that uh, you can understand uh, uh, nicely and it is easier to remember. If you correlate the things and then study, it will be easier. If you um, do not correlate and read individually, then it, it sometimes it is uh, um, difficult. Okay. So corticosteroid, it is for uh, the stressful condition to fight, flight. Okay. In those conditions, the corticosteroids are required. And for that, you need an energy. Okay. And to have an energy. Okay. So that is why corticosteroid breaks all those protein, fat, and converts into the glucose, make the glucose, that is what is gluconeogenesis. So that glucose could be utilized for the, uh, uh, as a energy, okay? So that is what happens. So that is why when corticosteroid um, level is more, there will be more glucose level, okay, in the body. Now here insulin, what does it do is, it try to, uh, uh, it is anabolic hormone. It um, decreases the breakdown of that. Okay. It suppresses gluconeogenesis. Okay. It is anabolic. It facilitates the growth. However, this insulin try to decrease the blood sugar level. Okay. Blood sugar. So for that, they, it suppress the gluconeogenesis. Okay. Um, and glycogenolysis. And it also helps to enter the glucose into the cells. So insulin help to enter okay facilitate the entry of uh, blood glucose into the cell so in presence of insulin the glucose will enter into the cells okay so that is enter into the cell so blood glucose level decreases in case of insulin okay so this is how if you remember it will be easy so it is an anabolic so it has action on adipose tissue it increases glucose entry inhibit lipolysis it inhibit the um, breakdown of uh, lipid and uh, it inhibit the release of fatty acid so it, it it remain okay so that is why the body in presence of insulin the body weight increases are you getting me and in diabetes mellitus what happens tell me insulin level increase or decrease decrease be loud you are correct in diabetes mellitus, the concentration of insulin increases or decreases? Decreases. 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 So what will happen? Body weight will, what it will do? Since anabolic hormone is decreasing, so body weight will increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. Yes. That is why the symptoms, in symptoms of uh, diabetes mellitus, I told you there will be unexplained body loss. The patient will feed more, they feel hungry, okay, eat more, even then the body weight is losing. Okay, why body weight is losing? Because your anabolic hormone concentration is decreasing. Okay, so in physiology, try to correlate this in a better way and then you come up with um, uh, good ideas or clear concept. Okay, so, but remember, so adipose tissue, it inhibit the breakdown. Okay. So it increased triglyceride deposition and it increased potassium uptake, up, potassium uptake by the um, um, cells. So what will happen to the potassium level in blood? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. Very good. That is a clinical important thing. That is why I am emphasizing on that. Okay. In muscle, what does it do is it increase glucose entry increase um, uh, glu um, gly glycogen synthesis okay increase amino acid uptake and protein synthesis increase potassium uptake so it inhibit 
okay this in muscle it inhibit the protein breakdown the amino acid breakdown okay so that is rather it will increase amino acid uptake and protein synthesis so that is why muscle mass will increase so remember in insulin okay in diabetes patient okay when we start uh, giving insulin sometimes the body in uh, body weight increases so very lean and thin person very very uh, thin person uh, if you start uh, the thin person suffering from diabetes mellitus we prefer insulin why because when you give insulin the blood glucose level will decrease and the body mass will also increase in very thin person very lean and thin uh, sometimes we prefer insulin to control the diabetes mellitus okay so in muscle it does that okay so even in muscle it increase the potassium uptake so that is why insulin uh, in presence of insulin the blood uh, potassium level what happens increase or decrease decreased decrease very good okay keep this in mind uh, very nicely because in case of uh, like in medicine in in uh, ninth semester also sometime it is asked okay a patient hyperkalemia the patient having high uh, potassium level how you are going to manage okay one of the um, uh, method is uh, use of insulin okay but the use of insulin is tricky if you use the insulin alone the blood glucose level will fall not only the potassium level blood glucose level will also fall so that is why we combine uh, glucose and insulin and give so what will happen glucose will not fall rather the potassium level will fall so that is also an important question in um, uh, medicine so that is why i am emphasizing so insulin decrease the blood uh, potassium level okay so um, insulin sometimes mixed with glucose is given uh, for hyperkalemic patient whose potassium level is higher and you want to decrease give insulin plus um, glucose so what will happen that there won't be hypoglycemia but rather there will be hyperkalemia the hypokalemia the potassium level will decrease okay got it have i clarified or highlighted or confused you yes today i am not getting feedback uh, much from the student side why okay this why i am asking is just to ensure that what i have conveyed to you has it been taken um, correctly or not okay if it has been your answer is correct then i will understand that okay it has been taken correctly if it is wrong then i will repeat try to uh, explain the same thing in a other way round okay so don't hesitate to give the feedback okay have you understood or confused understood sir understood okay. sir okay uh now in liver in liver what happens what insulin do is it increase glucose uptake it um, takes the glucose from the blood so uh, glucose level decreases glycogen synthesis is uh, increased it inhibit gluconeogenesis and glucose output that is gluconeogenesis will also be inhibited okay so glucose output is Uh, decrease because all those amino acids will be used uh, to uh, synthesize the protein rather than making a glucose okay so that is what it inhibits the gluco um, neogenesis and in general what does it do is it increase or facilitate the uh, cell growth okay so that is why it is an anabolic hormone now how does this uh, it carry out out the um, the action okay now this uh, the action of insulin is very complicated so um, i don't think you have to go into very detail of uh, the mechanism of action so that is why in 
in, in short i am trying to explain this uh, mechanism of action of insulin okay so this insulin how they act on an insulin receptor okay this is just a, um, a, a diagram okay representing the insulin receptor okay so insulin receptor has uh, four subunit two alpha subunit okay so this is a cell membrane okay this one okay uh, is it visible to you all the di uh, the slide and the figure yes yes sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So yes, this sir. is a cell membrane, okay? And there are four subunit, one, two, three, and four. These two subunits, which is outside the cells, okay, extracellularly, they are alpha subunit, alpha subunit of insulin, okay? While there is a two subunit, this is beta subunit, which is uh, present intracellularly as well as uh, intracellularly, in okay? inter or in between even some portion is outside the cell also so alpha receptor subunit two alpha subunit is um, solely extracellular while beta subunit so these four subunits are there okay now insulin it comes and bind with it this alpha subunit okay extracellular the insulin will bind over here okay now what will happen when insulin bind okay insulin bind to alpha subunit and uh, this alpha subunit regulates the beta subunit activity okay so what will happen then there will be internalization of the complex complex means the insulin plus insulin receptor complex it will be inter uh, internalized and there will be autophosphorylation there will be a lot of phosphorylations which is which happens automatically so autophosphorylation of beta subunit and this autophosphorylation leads to increase tyrosine kinase activity which leads to cascade of phosphorylation and dephosphorylation reaction many reactions will occur simultaneously in, inside the cell okay now that all those um, reaction ultimately what does it do is it stimulate or inhibit um, inhibit enzyme which is used by insulin for its action okay so it inhibit and stimulate the enzyme and especially it also do the glut translocation glut is glucose transporter okay you uh, uh, in in uh, the animated slide i have said this glucose transporter help in uh, carrying the glucose from uh, blood into the beta cell isn't it so this translocation is also done that means it will go to the membrane with the help of insulin it it um, okay the insulin also um, help in translocation of that glucose uh, transporter in the cell membrane okay so this is how the insulin act okay so uh, complicated if you um, go through the textbook then there will be complicated mechanism of action but at least this much is required okay so now pharmacokinetics of insulin insulin is not given orally why what could be the reason yes anyone sir it is a peptide it will be digested in the yes sir yes it is a peptide okay so when we take orally it will be digested and amino acids will be formed and that amino acid will not be effective okay so to the insulin to be effective the two chain along with the disulfide bond should be intact okay so that is why when we take orally it will be digested so that is why it is not given orally rather the most preferred route of administration is subcutaneous okay um, subcutaneous mostly preferred even in an emergency we can use intravenously but remember for intravenous injection the special insulin are there all insulin cannot be given um, intravenously okay so we will talk that so the most preferred route is subcutaneous okay and this insulin is metabolized in liver kidney and muscle okay the metabolism in uh, liver and kidney is important and uh, uh, kidney metabolizes the insulin okay yes
So can you tell me if there is kidney failure, what will happen to insulin level and glucose level? Yes. Anyone? Glucose will be decreased, insulin will be increased. Since insulin will not be metabolized, insulin concentration will increase and glucose will decrease so that the patient will go into hypoglycemia. So in kidney disease patient, the insulin dose will be higher or lower? Lower. Yes, very good. So that is a clinical importance. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the enzymatic degradation, this insulin is degraded enzymatically and disulfide uh, sulfide bonds are reduced. Okay, and chain are separated. So, um, and the other remaining is broken down into amino acid. AA, uh, 2A means, this means amino acids. Okay. And the T half, plasma half-life is just five to nine minutes. So insulin, it is short acting, okay? So um, one challenge with the insulin is that, okay, the duration of action, okay? So um, some work was done to increase the um, T half, okay, of insulin, we will talk later. Insulin type, we can uh, divide insulin into um, uh, various types as per according to source we can say conventional and human insulin conventional means the animal insulin okay but nowadays and animal insulin preparation are not that available okay now these animal in, uh, insulin when it was used Okay, lot of um, hypersensitivity reaction, even resistance to insulin were um, observed. Okay, and that was due to the, um, of course, this insulin is protein in nature and some amino acids are different. Okay, apart from that, while extracting these insulin from uh, the animals, the other protein substance used to come. So that also increased the antigenicity. And I think in year 1970s, okay, some purification technology was uh, developed, okay, so that only insulin could be um, separated um, from other protein substances, okay. So that type of uh, conventional insulin uh, was said to be highly purified insulin preparation and they were less antigenic okay so those were popular but later on the technology recombinant dna technology came and then human insulin was developed and um, initially the price of human insulin was very high but now the price has come down and now it is very economic so that is why we are using human insulin now these conventional insulin or animal insulin is absolute it is not available from the market but for just uh, knowledge, you have to know that there are two types we can classify as conventional, that is animal source insulin and the human insulin. Human insulin doesn't mean that it is extracted from human, okay? Rather, it is produced by recombinant DNA technology, a gene which produces um, um, insulin in our body is taken and uh, then um, integrated with E. coli and uh, insulin is produced. That is what you know about the recombinant DNA technology. Okay, so just using the gene, okay, the insulin is produced. So it is produced by recombinant DNA technology. And human insulin, they are more water soluble and hydrophobic, okay, than conventional insulin. So that is why they are more faster acting. They are the human insulin, they are less antigenic, they are little bit faster acting than the conventional insulin and the price is also cheaper. So that is why nowadays we prefer the human insulin. Okay, so more rapid subcutaneous absorption and shorter acting than the conventional insulin and it is valuable in case of allergy to conventional, um, conventional insulin or insulin resistance, uh, lipodystrophy and pregnancy. Okay. 
like earlier uh, okay uh, before um, uh, 1970s or during 1970s when the animal insulins were used okay um, at that time at the site of injection the um, the uh, there used to be the lipid um, uh, or you can say there is excessive growth of um, the muscle or uh, lipid was there which lead to uh, uh, some type of abscess which is said to be lipodystrophy okay hypertrophy of uh, the um, okay our uh, say the at the site of uh, the injection hypertrophy used to be observed so that was the side effect with the conventional insulin but nowadays that is very very less because it is less antigenic so that is why it is valuable okay nowadays we prefer human insulin if, if someone asks why we prefer human insulin because it is um, uh, similar to human and it is uh, rapid um, it has rapid absorption and um, uh, fast action okay than the conventional insulin and they are less allergic and so that is why the side effects are less okay so that is why we prefer and the price wise the human insulin is nowadays okay uh, cheaper than the animal insulin so that is why nowadays we don't use the conventional insulins okay so human insulin so human insulin was there but even um, uh, like uh, uh, while classifying this uh, insulin we can uh, classify insulin as per onset and duration of action okay so onset of duration of action we can classify and all these are insulin okay or human insulin okay so not the conventional even conventional also were available in these formulation long back okay not nowadays so as per onset and duration of action we can classify as a rapid acting insulin list pro insulin s part we have short acting fast acting okay it is uh, uh, it is not rapid acting but a fast acting it is regular insulin or it is a soluble insulin okay this insulin when you see it is like uh, water okay not um, uh, like a suspense or, or a cloudy thing or rice water okay the other insulin may look like a rice water okay but this is a very clear water type okay regular insulin okay soluble regular means it is a soluble it is a regular doesn't mean that the insulin which is taken regularly or daily okay it is soluble insulin and we have intermediate insulin i have already said the insulin um, have short um, t half to so to overcome it the insulin was mixed with zinc suspension okay so um, uh, by uh, mixing with zinc it was said to be lente okay so lente insulin that means insulin mixed with zinc and why it was mixed with zinc uh, so that the duration of action or t half could be prolonged so that is why this is how it has been increased and it act for intermediate period of time similarly protamine when protamine was mixed or complex of insulin and protamine was formed it was found that the insulin was acting for a long period of time so that is what we say neutral, neutral protamine hexadiol or NPH in short we say or isofen insulin okay same name okay so these are the intermediate acts acting and long acting is protamine zinc insulin PZI and now uh, the recently developed one the longest acting uh, insulin is insulin glargine okay and now see this insulin lispro insulin s part insulin glargine generally they are uh, said to be insulin analog it is not exactly a insulin but it, it is similar to insulin insulin analog okay so remember that is why it is sometimes important for mcq also all these are insulin but insulin lispro insulin s part insulin glargine you can say it as an insulin but better term is insulin analog they are insulin analog okay why this was developed what was the reason why this analog now if you see this analog is very rapidly acting very fast acting and this is a longest acting okay insulin glargine 
Why we developed and what is this uh, insulin analog? It is produced, this insulin analog is produced by recombinant DNA technology and it has modified pharmacokinetic, but dynamic is safe. The effect of this is exactly similar to that of insulin, but their pharmacokinetic is different. Like you can see that uh, um, this insulin Lispro and insulin S part, they are very fast acting, very rapidly acting. While insulin glargin, they act slow. This insulin glargin act slow, but act for long period of time. The, when you give insulin glargin, it act for around 24 hours. Okay, so the kinetics has been changed, isn't it? Both the rapidly acting and long acting. So kinetic has been changed, but the effect is same. Effect is that similar to that of insulin. So that is why it is insulin analog. Okay. And uh, uh, not only the pharmacokinetics, even their um, stability has increased, okay, greater stability, okay. So it is said that insulin an analog, generally they are available in pain formulation. If it is, um, uh, the insulin has to be stored in um, uh, refrigerator in temperature around 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. But this analog, if you keep these uh, analog in room temperature, that means around 20 degree also then it works so that is why the storing problem is not there even though we prefer we ask the patient to um, uh, store in the uh, temperature between 2 to 8 degree centigrade but somehow if uh, the temperature could not be maintained for some period of time it doesn't hamper the stability of the insulin analog so that uh, stability and the pharmacokinetic. These two are the added advantage of insulin analog. Okay, so examples are insulin, Lispro, insulin, S part, insulin, glargin. One more is there. Please try to find and add. Okay, so what is the difference? Okay, so rapidly acting insulin or insulin Lispro, or you can say insulin analog. How they are different? They are different in chain B. Okay, in 28 and 29 position. Here, 28 and 29 position the the in this um, amino acids are different here okay so just there is a change just by changing this amino acid sequence they act uh, um, very rapidly so that is why it is given immediately before or immediately after the meal okay generally we prefer giving immediately before the meal okay this is this pro insulin glargin very Peculiar, very uh, typical thing about this is insulin glargin is uh, soluble in acidic pH. Okay, so the um, uh, glargin which is present in bile, the pH is around 4. Okay, now 4, this is acidic pH. And when we inject subcutaneously, then the pH in body is what is the pH of uh, our body? 7.5 yes. to 7.45. Be, be loud. What is Around 7.5 to 7.45. Yes. 7 point, uh, more than 7.4. Neutral pH. So when uh, we inject in, in neutral pH, it becomes crystal. It precipitate, form a crystal. Glargine. Okay. And from that crystal, it will be slowly released. The insulin will be, this glargin will be released very slowly. So that is why it is acting slow, but for a long period of time. Got it? Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And similarly, the action is delayed slowly, the action uh, pick up, and there will be no pickless effect. Okay? A flat type of, when you see the plasma curve of this, Glargin, there will be something like flat. So, pickless insulin. It is also said to be pickless insulin. Okay, there is no sharp pick in the plasma level. So, pickless insulin. More than that, one more important point. Okay, this insulin, generally the other insulin which we discussed, okay, they are basic in nature and you can mix one insulin with other insulin. The um, regular insulin with intermediate insulin, it is mixed and then it is available as a split dose formulation. You can do that, but remember they are basic 
and this is acidic it is stable in acidic ph so you cannot mix those insulin with glargine never mix because this is acidic that one is base if you mix there will be acid base reaction so no action action will be lost so glargine is always given alone it is never mixed with other insulin the other insulin they can be mixed like new um, um, the regular insulin and um, insulin nph is very commonly um, combined in a same vial to make it fast acting and intermediate acting but this glargine should never be mixed okay got it yes sir okay so very important point is it is ph acidic when we inject in uh, neutral or say uh, in a basic ph it will precipitate and then the crystal will be formed and that crystal will slowly release the insulin that is why it is um, acting for a long period of time since it is acidic one so there will be little bit more painful the insulin sometimes the patient may feel for uh, complain of that but that is not very common problem or intolerable uh, and the action will be for uh, 24 hours generally glargine is given once a day okay especially preferred in um, after bed time um, after uh, say dinner um, at bed time it is injected okay and it works for 24 hour okay so this uh, the treatment regimen or use of insulin we will discuss in the last therapy of diabetes mellitus okay now in uh, glargine this is where the amino acid sequence is different okay adverse effect of insulin what is the adverse effect the most important the dose dependent adverse effect is hypoglycemia when when you give um, insulin okay in higher dose the blood glucose may fall number 1 okay number 2 what happens when we titrate the insulin generally we titrate insulin um or dose adjustment is done considering the meal okay the activity exercise these two aspect are also seen not only that the hyperglycemia or um, uh, the diabetes mellitus sugar level so these three things diet activity and um, this is considered if it is balanced there will be no hypoglycemia if there is you have given the correct dose okay but that day the meal was missed the patient did not took meal then what will happen there could be hypoglycemia okay this one or sometime that day the patient did some extra activity again there could be a hypoglycemia okay so that is why hypoglycemia is very common symptoms of insulin therapy so that is why uh, we ask the patient the patient who are on insulin we ask them to carry a chocolate okay sometime it looks like paradoxical a insulin blood glucose level is higher and then the patient is uh, carrying chocolate and sometime even taking that chocolate okay so actually when there is hypoglycemia the um, hypoglycemia has to be corrected so you as a doctor when you are prescribing insulin you have to uh, advise your patient how to know the symptoms of hypoglycemia and what to do what to do take a chocolate and have it that is the most effective method to uh, manage hypoglycemia okay and uh, how to identify that is important so hypoglycemia the symptoms of hypoglycemia and other we will talk in other uh, slide okay so uh, local uh, the apart from this the other um, is uh, reaction or other side effect is swelling erythema uh, lipodystrophy so that is why it was more common in conventional insulin now what is the insulin is uh, this uh, side effect is less even then we uh, take a precautions we always ask the patient to rotate the site of uh, the injection don't inject in same place same site every time just rotate sometime in abdomen take in abdomen sometime in the thigh okay or sometime in right thigh left thigh okay abdomen also uh, right side left side so do the rotation so that the hypo uh, lipodystrophy could be um, uh, prevented okay 
allergy and resistance it is it was very common with the, the animal insulin but for with in human insulin it is very very less okay so but that could happen and insulin edema sometime what happen when we start the insulin therapy to the patient sometime the edema may happen but that remain for transient very short period of time that will go and just during the starting of insulin that may happen so that is insulin edema and weight gain of course insulin when you use it is an anabolic hormone isn't it so it, it leads to weight gain okay ah uh, got it now let us talk about hypoglycemia hypoglycemia it is frequent and potentially more serious side effect okay uh, so it is common in diabetes mellitus patient receiving large dose of insulin or if they have missed the meal or vigorous exercise after taking insulin so remember after taking insulin the patient has to take the meal generally insulin is taken before the meal okay so after taking insulin the meal has to be taken it should not be missed if someone missed the meal okay then there could be hypoglycemia or do more exercise hypoglycemia or sometimes the dose is higher in that case also hypoglycemia so it is a common okay uh, it is frequent so that is why you have to educate the patient the symptoms symptoms when there is hypoglycemia number one is sympathetic stimulation there will be stimulation of sympathetic nervous system okay one and then uh, uh, after uh, okay uh, immediately or in uh, when blood glucose level fall uh, less there will be sympathetic stimulation when there is more fall in um, blood sugar level there will be hypo uh, neuro leukopenic symptoms that means the ne neuronal tissue especially the brain do not get the um, glucose and there will be symptoms okay so the sympathetic stimulation call, uh, leads to like tremor sweating palpitation heart rate may increase so the patient on insulin when the patient feel okay like um, um, tremor sweating palpitation then the patient should understand that now the best uh, i am having hypoglycemia i have to take the chocolate this is one thing and if it persists for long period of time or hypoglycemia is more then there will be dizziness um, um, okay um, syncope and the patient may land up to coma okay so uh, faint the patient may faint and go to coma so that is why so early the hypoglycemia should be um, identified and it has to be treated and for the treatment the very important is give oral if the patient is conscious enough the oral glucose or chocolate whatever is most effective rather than in, in injection okay oral glucose is effective so that is why preferably oral is given if the patient is unconscious at that time we, we have to give iv glucose okay and if uh, that is not available generally the glucose is always available isn't it the sugar or chocolate or say the intravenous glucose is available in hospital if that is not then you can go with glucagon okay for the treatment now uses of insulin where the insulin is used it is used in type 1 diabetes mellitus and in case of uh, this the insulin it is the dose is individualized and sliding scale is used to um, um uh, adjust the dose okay sliding is here generally when you want to start the insulin the patient we ask the patient to hospitalize to be in hospital okay we admit the patient and then monitor the um, blood sugar sugar level and then we give regular insulin okay as per the sugar level every um, four hour that um, um, sugar level is four to six hour the um, blood glucose level is measured and as per the uh, reading the uh, certain amount of insulin is given so that is what is said to be a sliding scale okay and then it is given for 24 48 hours and then after giving that we will see in 24 hour how much insulin has been consumed by the patient 
okay then that regular insulin then that insulin that amount of insulin is divided into two morning dose and evening dose two third is given in the morning and one third is given in the evening and then again with we titrate with the um, sugar label and do the adjustment so that is how it is done okay so if you want to start okay uh, the um, insulin or you can give in this 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 unit per kg per day before each major meals okay so this is so insulin is used in type 1 diabetes mellitus number one and to start the therapy individualize the therapy sliding scale is used okay please go through the sliding scale if you find difficulty in next class we will talk about this and then continue okay and in special cases of type 2 diabetes mellitus in type 2 diabetes mellitus we prefer giving oral anti-diabetic drug but in special cases of type of type 2 diabetes we use what are those special when oral anti-diabetic drug fail we give number one when the person is very lean and thin i have already said underweight patient okay in that case you give insulin because it also help in uh, gaining the weight isn't it and um, type 2 diabetes mellitus um, which is having infection trauma or surgery these are stressful condition okay so in this case the requirement of insulin is more so that is why we substitute to the insulin and once all this infection trauma is controlled again we um, um, put the patient back to the oral anti-diabetic drug okay and if uh, during pregnancy the um, um, diabetes mellitus has been uh, detected uh, that is um, uh, in uh, type 3 uh, sorry type 4 gestational diabetes mellitus we prefer human insulin not only that if the patient type 2 diabetes mellitus patient willing to conceive okay in that case also we switch over we stop the oral and then switch over to the insulin therapy and during the complication of diabetes mellitus we go with uh, the insulin otherwise in type 2 diabetes mellitus we prefer oral anti-diabetic drug and non-diabetic uh, non use is insulin, uh, glucose plus insulin we give for management of hyperkalemia. That is what I have been emphasizing, isn't it? Okay. So important drug interaction, beta blocker, non-specific are contraindicated in diabetes mellitus patient receiving insulin. Okay. So because it masks the symptoms of hypoglycemia and delay the recovery. Okay. Uh, so please go through it. We have discussed this in ANS in first semester. Try to revise and in next class before starting the other class on Sunday. First we will discuss on this. Okay. And then we will um, further go ahead. This thiazide, furosemide, corticosteroid, oral contraceptive, all these uh, try these um, thiazide, furosemide, especially corticosteroid, they increase the blood glucose level. Okay, so that is why the effectiveness of the insulin decreases. Okay, so in that case, we may have to increase the dose of insulin. Okay, so acute ingestion of alcohol causes hypoglycemia. Okay, so that is. Uh, interaction so these are the uh, mcqs okay so please try to find the answer to these mcqs okay and in next class before starting the class we will discuss on these um, mcq the answer of these M mcqs and um, then we will go to the classes so this saq mcq please go through it okay so I will upload the PDF file of these slides so you, you can read the MCQ, SAQ and do that in next class. Before starting the next class, we will discuss the interactions, the uses of insulin, the interaction and MCQs. After that, we will start the oral anti-diabetic drug. Okay. So if you have any doubt, you can ask. Yes. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Any doubt? Yes or no? No, sir. 
please be very no, interactive okay so that the class become lively okay so please go through it and then on sunday we will discuss okay have a good day bye thank you sir